first. Um, looking at the first design challenge for the computer science cohorts. Looking at the first design challenge to get us started with Microbit, we are tasked with creating a rock, paper, scissors program that randomly generates an appropriate image when an input signal is received. In other words, we press button A or we shake the micro bit and we should see an image that represents a rock, a piece of paper, or scissors. Um, we're not going to get into any of the logic of whether or not you won against another player. For now, we're just going to use this triggering event, pushing a button, shaking, etc., to display the image, uh, either an image that we want or an image at random. So uh, to do this, anytime we get started in code, it's a great idea to start with some pseudocode. Let's consider what our, um, what our task is. And we're going to take that task, and we're going to start to break that down into the most sort of uh, concrete, linear steps that we can. So the first thing we need is some triggering event. So we're going to want a triggering event like a button push or shaking the micro bit. Once that happens, we need to, we want to display a random, a randomly generated image. That's what the task says, randomly generates an appropriate image. So we're going to need to get a random image. Well, to grab a random image, we're going to need a few things to happen. First, we're going to need to be able to um, generate a random number. Computers are much better with dealing with numbers than they are dealing with images. So we're going to start by generating a random number. Then we will use that random number to select one of our images. And then we will display the image. Now, buried in there, at some point, we have to do some extra work, we're going to need to define or design the image that we will use. Okay, so now that we've got our pseudocode done, we can see sort of these are the things that need to happen and the order they need to happen in. We're going to switch back over to um, make code and uh, get started. So I'm going to just minimize the comment here the word that had the design challenge in it. Um, I'm also, for now, just to give ourselves some more real estate, I'm going to click on this little arrow here to hide the simulator, and it gives me more space to be able to do my coding. So I'll move my comment off to the side. Um, the little comments like post-it notes are just places you can add notes in the Make Code Editor. They don't actually affect the code, but it's a great way to comment or describe what's going on or even just put little notes for yourself while you're coding. Um, I also realize when I look at my pseudocode, I realize that nothing in the in the code is going to be happening forever. It's not always happening. It's happening only when there's a triggering event. So if I know that, we can think of triggering events as inputs. So I'm expecting some input, and when that input happens, the rest of these items should occur. So if that's the case, I've got an input that triggers these other events to occur then I can get rid of my forever block and my start block. So as we just described, we said we need to go to input first. We're going to go to input. And when I think of rock, paper, scissors, the traditional game, I think shaking makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to grab on shake. And we can see from the drop down, there's lots of options depending on the version of micro bit that you're using. But I'm going to keep this at on shake. So on shake, we're going to go back to our pseudocode and see what was the first thing that happens when we shake this. We need to first generate a random number. So I could just generate a random number, or I could create a variable to hold a random number. Because of the way our pseudocode writes, I think I want to generate a random number into a variable. So I'm going to first go to variables and create a variable, and I'll just name it something that makes sense within this context. So I'll just call it a random number. And I'm going to set a random number. I'll put that from our variables block into our code. And then I need to go to math because I want to actually pick a random number. And computers are really good at math, so we'll let the computer do this for us. So we're going to set our variable random number to, and we're going to let it pick a random number. Now we're going to want numbers from 1 
to three. So we'll change our minimum value and our maximum value from one to three. So right now, if we were to shake our microbe up, all that would happen is this variable, which you could think of as like a container, is going to be given a number at random. Every time we shake the microbe, it's going to get a number either one, two, or three. So once I have that uh, random number generator defined, now I can look at what else should happen. Well, I've generated my random number after shaking. Now I need to use that random number to select one of the images. And while we do that, we'll, we'll define the images in this step as well. So we're going to go to logic. There's a few ways you could do this, but we're going to start with logic. And we'll just grab a simple if statement. And we're going to go back into logic and grab a comparison block that compares for equality. Now remember, we've got this variable random number that when we shake our micro bit, just got a random number assigned to it within our range. So I'm gonna grab the random number and you'll notice the shape of random number fits nicely in the first uh, condition. So if our random number is equal to, let's just start with one. If it's equal to one, we wanna display an image that looks like a rock. So we'll go into show LEDs and while I'm not an artist, this makes it pretty easy to draw a simple rock. So I'll draw a rock. Now that's done. If I shake this, anytime I get a one as my random number that's generated, it's stored in random number, the variable. And then the conditional looks for if the value of random number is equal to one, then turn on these LEDs. In other words, show the image that we're, we're saying looks like a rock. Now, we can continue this process because we've got three images. We need to do rock, paper, and scissors. So we've now used the random number to select one of our images. We can display the image. So essentially, we're done. We just need to replicate this step for the next two images for, for paper and scissors. So we're going to press the plus sign on the conditional. And you notice this gives us a if random number was one, then do this. Else, then do this. But we need two options. So we're going to click the plus one more time. And then you'll notice as I move my mouse, it hovers over different components, like different blocks and different components within those blocks. So if I hover over a random number, that's highlighted. Or if I hover over the comparison uh, shape, that gets highlighted. I'm going to click on the comparison shape and I can right click that and click duplicate. And it'll duplicate that exact same logic that I can put in the next if statement. And I'm going to change this from one to two. And I'll do the same thing with my show LEDs. I'm going to duplicate this and I can drop this into that block of code. <clears throat> and then I'm going to draw, this will be my paper. So I'll just draw an outline on the perimeter and say that that's what is paper here. So let's just look at the logic really quickly. I'm going to zoom out a little so you can see the whole code. Um, I now say I shake the micro bit and on shake or when I shake the micro bit, I set random number to a random number between one and three, set this variable to a random number between one and three. I look to see, does that random number equal one? Was the number one? If so, show rock. Otherwise or else, if that random number shows two, I should show paper. And if it doesn't show one or two, then the random number has to be three. That's the only other available option. So I'm gonna duplicate this block one more time. And I don't need another conditional because the only remaining condition is three. So I don't need to put in a comparison block for that. That's the only other option. So I'll get rid of my uh, paper and I will draw out uh, some version of scissors here. And so now I can see this logic when I zoom out just a bit further, that if I get a one, from the random number generator, I'm gonna show rock. If I get a two, I'm gonna show paper. And if I didn't get a one or a two, I must have gotten a three, so I should show scissors. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna do two things. I wanna check it on my um, simulator. So I'll hit stop on the simulator and hit play. And now we should notice nothing happens until we shake it. But you saw as soon as I shook the simulator, I got a one apparently, because I got a rock. Then I'll shake it again. I'll click the little shake button here. I got a three, I got scissors. I got a two, I got paper, and so we see it's doing exactly what we expected it to do. Um, I'm gonna go back and double check my pseudocode and make sure that I've done everything that I thought I needed to do. Indeed I have, 
that's the tutorial for the rock, paper, scissors, simple version on a micro bit.